Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I just got back from Algonquin. I was out there for a few nights and I did some canoeing. And before I clean everything and put it away, I thought I would do a quick beer review or at least show you what I brought and what I would and wouldn't bring again. Um, I know um, we tend to bring too much stuff when we go and I always bring too much. So this is as much for me as it is for you. Maybe I can review this and next time not bring some things that I'm not using. Um, the bag, I used a regular full size hiking bag and the only complaint I have about that is it's too tall. You can't get the boat down all the way to where you need it to be when you have this, this tall backpack on you at the same time. So you really can't uh, single carry with, with a bag like that. At least I wasn't able to. Um, the sleeping bag I used was this Duration 20 degree bag. It's a cheap Amazon bag, but it does it did pretty well. First time I've used it, um, it, it wicked water really well. Um, I know that because I got quite a bit of water in my tent uh, one night, and the inside has a nice soft liner. Um, it has drawstrings and a zipper pocket. A uh, nice warm bag. Um, the tent is this is a Sierra Designs a clip flashlight. I've had it for 20 years, and every time I repair um, a leak, uh, a new leak springs up. And this is a great company. They've done me very well. Um, when I first bought it, I had a small problem with the rain fly. They overnighted me a new rain fly free of charge to some random general delivery post office box in, in Monson, Maine. So thank you, Sierra Designs. Um, if you made the clip flashlight still, I would go out and buy another one tomorrow. Awesome, awesome piece of gear. Um, rain fly. Rain fly, I use the evolution.com rain fly. I've had it for two or three seasons now. Comes with everything you need to set it up. It, it rocks. Very good rain fly. Sleeping pad, I use the Thermarest. I don't know if you can see that. Um, I think it's called the Trail Scout. I wish it packed down a little bit smaller, and I've tied it up before tight, but I felt like I might be doing some damage to it, so I stopped doing that. But a good pad for the money. Uh, cook kit. All right, so I use this um, MSR stainless steel cook kit. Um, and then inside I have uh, another container for food prep or sharing or whatever. And I use uh, an alcohol stove that I, I kind of made myself. And I keep some spices and stuff in there. And I put some denatured alcohol in this. This is probably four days worth for me. And this I usually put in a mesh bag or something just because it gets kind of black and that way when I put it in my pack, it doesn't get everything else black as well. Uh, this cup I brought for coffee and I've got a coffee filter and coffee in here. Um, it didn't work out. I tried to do pour over coffee on my own with boiling water no, I think I'm going to go back to Instant, even though Instant doesn't taste as good. And I also, um, when I was done packing up for the day, I usually was standing there with this stupid cup in my hand wondering how I'm going to fit this in my bag. I can never find a spot for it, so I have to work on that. New cup. Uh, this is my water filter kit. It's got the back flow and an extra platypus container. Um, I use the Sawyer Squeeze with the Smart Water bottle like a lot of people do and that works out good for me Sawyer squeeze thumbs up on that excellent I do bring the I bring all the accessories they weigh like literally an ounce and it's good to have I've had it plug up before depending on what kind of water you're getting um, my dry bag I use the sea to summit this is a 13 liter um, I've had this for about probably eight trips now, and it's still dry as a bone inside. Um, really high quality bag, in my opinion. And I always keep about 10 or 15 feet of uh, heavy duty cotton. I think it's clothesline. And I use that for my bow line. Uh, fishing stuff. So I brought way too much fishing stuff. Uh, I brought like two or three of every type of lure, basically. Um, I need to cut this in half. I have this separate container just for split shot and hooks that I used like four of instead of the 10,000 that are in here. And I brought this spool of mono. Um, 
I brought one spinning cast rod and reel, and I used to bring two. That's a waste. Bring one rod and reel. Um, the reason I need to cut this down is when you get to the portage, you need to be able to throw all your loose stuff into a bag. I put everything into here, and then I clip it to my belt. I take my bag out, set it down. I grab the boat and the paddle and this, and I go. I come back for the bag. Um, trying to fit this in here is a pain because I also got my water bottle in there, my sunscreen, you know, whatever else I had floating around. So I need to work on the fishing gear, not so much of it, and a smaller container. And I'm not going to bring an extra spool of mono next time. Not necessary. Uh, paracord, I brought about this much paracord. I think I used pretty much all of it. It rained a lot, so I, I had to hang things and rig up tarps and blah, blah, blah. Uh, my camp shoes are these New Balance running shoes. Yes, I would wear those again. They were fine. Um, my boots for canoeing. Uh, these are like the 400 Thinsulate mid-grade muck boots. A little warm on my feet, but for the most part, my feet were dry. I think if you're careful, you could possibly get to camp at the end of the day with dry feet if you're careful and you wear a pair of tall rubber boots. You don't need the 400 Thinsulate, in my opinion, unless it's really cold outside. I think you could get away with a cheap rubber pair. But the first time I ever tried that, worked out pretty good. Thanks, Poza. Um, cutting tools, I, I have the Samurai saw. It's like $11. It is awesome. Great saw. Unfortunately, I didn't catch any fish, so I didn't use this. The Mora I used once. Um, it weighs almost nothing, so I would probably bring this again, but I, I don't usually end up using large knives, just tiny ones. Um, I did bring this axe. I'm not bringing it again. I love having an axe. I always use it, but I do not need it. I can just find smaller pieces and saw it up with this. I don't need to split firewood. And if I do have to baton, I can do it with this. It's like a $10 knife. You can even get them for like seven. So who cares if it breaks? Um, so too much cutting tools. Um, the flashlight I brought is, is made by Cree. It's like a through night knockoff. It's got a clip. It uses one single AA battery. So yes, I would do that. Uh, this is a uh, survival bracelet. We all know what that is. I usually do bring that. Sunglasses is a must. Uh, clothes. This has a little carabiner. I clip it to my pack to dry. I would clip it to my waist while I was in camp to keep things clean. Good idea. Yes, loved it. Um, pack towel. I never used, but I do love these. You know, you squeeze it and it, it pretty much dries as soon as you squeeze it. Amazing. Um, the bandana, I did wrap around my neck a couple times like this when I was cold, kind of hunkered down under the rain fly, just kind of waiting for a storm to pass. And it's amazing how much warmer you get, like, immediately if you just wrap something light around your neck. So bring that for sure. This is to protect my fishing reel. No, I'm not bringing that anymore. Dumb idea. Let your fishing reel get wet. Um, this is a 100% cotton uh, Hanes white t-shirt. Or it used to be white. Um, this is this is a ridiculously dumb idea. I would never wear this on a canoe trip again. It got wet like in the first five hours and it's still wet now and I've been home for a day. I carry this around for three or four days in my pack. It's a horrible idea. Basically it will never dry. It's never going to get clean again. Uh, I, this is garbage. I put my extra clothes in a uh, laundry bag like this that's cotton and I had my, my sweats here that are all cotton, and I was going to put all my extra clothes in this, or I had them all in this, and I was going to use that as my pillow. But it got wet, and it wasn't because it was not wrapped up correctly. I took it out of my bag. It was underneath the rain fly. It was raining. I was all dry. I set it on the ground, looked away, did something else, and a little trickle of a river came from over there, and got into this and by the time I figured that out it was wet and I carried around these wet clothes for the rest of the trip never got to use them and I need to work on that so a synthetic bag or some sort of dry bag for my clothes and not cotton clothes 
Um, the shirt I wore canoeing is this cheap sail rack uh, gap button up um, short sleeve shirt. It has a pocket. I find it helpful to have a, a chest pocket when you're canoeing because it's sometimes hard to get into your hip pockets. I can put my compass in there or you know whatever, something I'm munching on. Um, it, this is a 50-50 blend of cotton and um, synthetic something and it got wet and dried like 20 times. Good shirt. Uh, the pants are a North Face. Um, they're light, um, they dry really fast, they've got the mesh pockets. Uh, they're pricey, I've had them for a couple of years, um, they're worth it. Uh, <clears throat> not Fall Raven pants pricey, but a little pricey, but yeah, I would wear those again. Um, the sweatshirt is, this is a North Face full zip hoodie, uh, kind of their no frills one, no drawstring, whatever, but it, it's plenty warm and it blocks the wind really well. I recommend it. Uh, socks, I just wear regular um, crew socks, athletic socks. I can't bring myself to buy a $20 pair of socks. I don't, I'll just keep wearing these probably. Um, the seat, I just bought the seat. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's not the greatest seat, but it was nice to have a seat. This one is made by Alps. Um, it, it does clip to the canoe seat. I actually was able to use it in camp as well as my camp chair. Um, it's got a, a, a mesh pocket where I keep my hat and sometimes I would keep the map and stuff back there. Um, it's got a handle. So can you get a better seat than this? Yes. But did this work? Yes. And I'm going to keep using it. Um, this is my everything bag. I've got my first aid, my compass, my fire steel, my eating utensils, um, some bug spray, you know, my pharmacy type of stuff, you know, aspirin, Benadryl, stuff you might need. Repair kit, that all goes in here. Uh, some people call it a possibles pouch. I like that it's see-through. Um, it is kind of hard to find stuff sometimes because you got to dive in the top, but that's what I got. It works out okay. My food bag is another mesh bag. Um, I need to do a better job with my food bag. I need something that I can tie to a tree. Um, it's really hard out there to find, um, you know, an appropriate hanging branch there's they're hard to find at least for me so I need a better food sack uh, I think that is everything you know like I said it's it's easy to bring too much stuff and I'm still bringing too much stuff I started canoeing when I was a teenager I'm getting back into it now in my 40s and and you need to just go out there with the bare minimum because the most fun I think is when it's light and easy to move around when you can jump from lake to lake and it's not like you're, you're um, dreading the portage because you don't want to have to carry all this weight, that's the problem. You can always improvise. I don't need four cutting tools, you know? I don't need eight days worth of food for a four day trip. Um, you know, you don't, you don't need two fishing poles and 48 fishing lures. So um, I'll probably look back at this myself next time I go to try to to pare it down a little bit more and try to get that bag down into you know 35 pound range it would be awesome and uh, then you can fly when you're out there so i hope this helped a little bit and uh, thanks for watching everybody